Hello everyone. So in this particular video, I am uh, actually going to discuss the transportation problem, and I'm going to solve it by lowest cost entry method. I got some comments on my previous video to record uh, about lowest cost entry method or matrix minimum method. So I have a very simple transportation problem right in front of me, and if you look into the things, then uh, this particular problem explains about. Uh, uh, the factories are listed over here that means there are four factories or four plants from which i am supplying to different three warehouses and in total 34 is uh, actually the demand and supply match and uh, so let me explain you the question a little bit so this uh, this is a cost matrix right so what does it mean that means if I am shipping one unit of the particular product for which this transportation plan is about and if I am shipping one unit of that particular product from factory F1 to market W1 then my cost is rupees 2 and you can multiply it by 10, 100, 1000 or probably lakhs so it depends on how much how big is your transportation route and you can uh, you know exactly scale it down by dividing a common factor so uh, similarly if i talk about this particular thing this is the cost of supplying one unit from f2 to w2 that means let us suppose i am producing uh, i would say uh, bikes motorbikes and i have a plant or factory f2 located somewhere in delhi and i have a market w2 located somewhere in ludhiana so if i send a bike from f2 to w2 then my uh, cost is uh, 3 rupees it could be 3000 rupees probably the transportation cost or 30 rupees or 300 rupees or 3 lakh rupees depending on the distance so i have scaled them down on, into the simplest units now uh, the market w1 or warehouse w1 requires 7 units market w2 requires 9 units again it can be multiplied by 1000 10 100 market w3 it requires 18 units Factory F1 has a capacity to produce only 5 units. Factory F2 has a capacity to produce only 8 units. F3 has a capacity to produce 7 units. And F4 has a capacity to produce only 14 units. So uh, if you uh, look into this particular thing, then uh, this is a balanced transportation problem because demand is equal to supply. And I have already discussed about unbalanced transportation problem in my uh, Google's approximation method. Now let's go ahead with the solution. So this is how I prepare the solution table in which exactly you put the costs on the top left corners like this. So if I look into the question before, it is uh, the cost matrix right here, which has been filled up. Only thing is the costs are kept in the top left corner because I'm going to use this space to make the allocations. So this is a solution matrix which I developed in order to calculate the transportation cost and uh, so how do i start i just look into the least cost cell and why do i see it because i try to identify the opportunity that where actually the least cost is available so if you look at the least cost the least cost is available here in this cell one rupee and in this particular cell that is f4 double one one rupee so i can choose any of these cells but my advice is choose where you can allocate maximum of units uh, what do i mean by this is that means if i choose this particular cell and start making an allocation then how much i can actually send from f2 to w3 so if you look into this particular thing uh, w3 requires 18 units while f2 can only produce 8 units so even though w3 requires 18 units i can only ship 8 units because f2 doesn't have the capacity to produce more than f8 8 units so i can uh, you know allocate or send 8 units here but if I look into the second minimum cost cell or the opportunity, why I call it calling it an opportunity cell? Because this is the minimum cost which is available in the entire matrix. That means I want to cash or uh, I want to capitalize on this particular opportunity where the cost is minimum. So if I see this particular cell here, F4 is producing 14 units while market W1 or warehouse W1 requires 7 units. So I cannot allocate all 14 unit, units here, I can allocate 7. So if you find, you find two minimum cells which are uh, uh, actually tying up. So in that case, you need to pick up a cell where you can make the maximum of the allocation. So I make eight allocations here because F2 can produce only eight 
despite of a w3 demanding 18 i can only supply 8 because f2 doesn't have more than 8 units so that is my first allocation and i just cross off f2 because it doesn't have anything else to supply to any of the markets of w2 and w1 again i search for the minimum cost cell so in this entire matrix minimum cost cell is this one once again so i capitalize this opportunity and i allocate 7 because w1 requires 7 though the availability is of 14 units but i cannot ship it to w1 because w1 has the requirement only of 7 units so the requirement of w1 gets fulfilled and i cut it off after that again i start hunting for the cell which has the minimum cost again i ended up with two this two and that two so if i look into this particular two i can maximum how many units can i can i ship something no w1 has been uh, was having the requirement of seven units it's, it's already been fulfilled so in this entire column of w1 i cannot ship anything so i just need to get to this particular cell this is the only option which is left or actually the highest opportunity of cost where i can capitalize w3 has already been given with eight units but it requires 18 units so how many units i can ship here 10 but if i ship 10 then f4 doesn't have the 10 units it has totally four, total 14 units out of which seven has already been given so how many maximum units i can give here seven because f2 doesn't f4 doesn't have more than 14 units 7 has already been shipped to w1 despite of w3 requiring 10 i can only ship 7 because f4 only is left for with uh, 7 units so i shipped 7 units here and uh, i hope you can get uh, an a clear idea where i should put a cross because i cannot put a cross at w3 this particular demand has not been satisfied so far but this particular supply is over f four doesn't have more than 14 units so i cut this whole supply off now i'll again search or start hunting for the minimum cost cell which is this three and this three w1 as i already said it is over so i'm left with this particular three but can i allocate something here no because f2 doesn't have anything to ship so these two options are gone so i am again going to search for the minimum cost cell which is this four and this four so out of these two fours uh, uh okay but if i make a uh, allocation here now i want you to answer that particular question how many i can ship eight and uh, seven is 15 so i can only ship three units here despite of f1 having five w3 requires only 18 so i can only ship three units here but if i look into this particular four here so how many i can ship if you look at this f3 has seven w2 requires nine so i can ship all seven here so i would go for uh okay i shipped three here because it anyways has to be allocated so i just allocated i'm extremely uh, sorry i'll just get back so i just pick up this particular cost cell fill all the demand by three units and just cross it over so uh, that means demand of w3 again gets fulfilled and all seven units are shipped here this has been uh, the all all units which are available will f3 gone is are gone to this particular warehouse here so if you look into this particular uh, market w2 only two units are left with f1 and the demand left with w2 is also of two units so i hope you can easily understand where i'm going to allocate these two units right here in this cell and i cut the supply i cut this all this demand is fulfilled by supply and if i calculate my total transportation cost in this particular case it comes out to be rupees 83 so how it has been calculated i'll just get back you can uh, pause this slide and note this thing down and you can look at here it is seven times two plus four times three plus one times eight plus four times seven plus one times seven plus two times seven so that's it thank you very much